Chair, at this time calls Mr. Tim Lambert, testifying for House Bill 1899 on behalf of the Texas Homeschool Coalition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Tim Lambert with the Texas Homeschool Coalition. Um, at the first time that we got involved in one of these cases was in Hector County in 2000 where uh, in-laws sued a homeschool family because they were vehemently opposed to their homeschooling. Um, and that case uh, w went to court for a long time, and the judge in that case spent a long time discussing whether or not it was in the best interest of those children to be homeschooled. And, of course, they were fit parents. There was not an abuse, uh, any allegations of abuse or neglect. So this is the reason we support this language. Uh, I think it's common sense. Uh, it's a troxel decision, and we're simply codifying what the case law already is. So we support that, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Any questions of Mr. Lambert, members? Not hearing any, Mr. Lambert. Thank you for being here. It seems like the overarching theme of, of the folks who are against this bill is that it should be in the first instance the judge who decides what's in the best interest of the child and not the parents. And it seems like it is in the, uh, it is the overarching theme of the author that it ought to be the parents who decide what's in the best interest of the child unless they've been proven not to be fit. Why is it that the first person we turn to, the first, a per, first person presumed to speak for the best interest of the child is a judge who doesn't know them compared to their parents if the parent hasn't found not to be fit? If you have two fit parents, first of all, many, many fit parents are never in a court of law, okay? And then what you are doing is you, by adding that if someone can show someone unfit, that other parent, the parent that wins, the fit parent, they get to decide it completely. So there are times when you will have an unfit parent and a fit parent, but let's say the fit parents, what they want to do the court doesn't see that in the child's best interest. So why would we why would we put a judge who isn't related and doesn't know the child above a fit parent who has given birth to the child or is the father and has raised them their whole life? If the if a parent who is fit disagrees with some stranger with a law degree about what's best for the child, why would we as a why would we decide that it's the guy with the law degree who doesn't know the kid? who gets to be the paramount decider and not the fit parent. Well, let me give you a specific example. Well, please answer my question first and then give me I, all the examples I, you want. Well, it's going to answer your question. Your question is, and here's an example. I was involved in a case where there was a mother that was unfit. There was a father who was fit that had not seen the child in 10 years. Well, then he wouldn't be fit under this statute because Who the definition determines of the, what fit the, is. The definition of this statute is a, a, a parent who does not adequately care for the parent's child. If he hasn't seen him in 10 years, there's no nobody who could determine that he has been adequately caring for the child. He hasn't even seen the child. You don't have evidence that he wouldn't. You don't have evidence that he couldn't adequately care for that child. No, no, it doesn't say wouldn't. It says does that the parent does not adequately care for the child. Under the definition of this statute, the example you gave me, the person could not be found to be a fit parent. I don't necessarily agree. You're going to tell me that in your, in your opinion, someone who has not seen a child in 10 years can be found to have been adequately caring for the child during that time? No, I'm not saying that. Well, you just did. But now, let me also ask you about the about the case that I believe Mr. Lambert raised uh, when he came up, which wasn't one parent versus another. It was grandparents who didn't like the fact that the parents, both of whom were fit, chose to homeschool their child and sued to try to get conservatorship away from the two fit parents who wanted to homeschool their child. Again, why would a judge's opinion of whether the child should be homeschooled be paramount over the two parents, both of whom are adequately caring for their child. The current law does not let a grandparent insert over two fit parents. 
I don't know his specific case and what he's talking about. What you do is you allege the parents aren't fit because they're homeschooling. He's talking about Troxel. I don't think a court would find two parents unfit because they homeschool their children. I don't agree with that. I certainly don't agree with it either. That's part of why we're here. But uh, but thank you. I appreciate you answering my questions. Any other questions, members? Yes. Oh, Mr. Kane. Ma'am, are you familiar with the origins of the best interest of the child doctrine? Yes. What are they? Well, the Holly factors, case no, law no, is no, trying to determine. In, in what century did the best interest of the child factors, kind of the concept, begin in family law? My understanding is in this century. That's correct. So there's kind of a lot of problems in this century as well. Do you believe maybe in an expanded view of the in parents patria doctrine? In I parents patria, it, should the government control uh, children's lives? No. Well, that's what the best interest standard is. Not if if you're in a court of law, you're asking the court to make a decision about your own children. Do you believe uh, that parents should uh, be able to decide? how they raise their children as they see fit? Yes. So you're okay then with parents being above their children? Yes. I, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought in the beginning you said what was wrong with this bill is it's putting parents above children. The problem is not all parents see what's in the best interest of their own children. You know, that contradicts the concept that they get to raise them as they see fit. Yes, but when you're in a court of law, you're asking a judge to make that decision for you. I think the members are tired. I'll, I'll stop. Thank you, ma'am.